Hello folks, this is Trevor Lewis again from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. Today we're going to be doing another video. This one is about orthographic projection drawing. It's an engineering drawing type. Um, in the United States we do third angle projections. Uh, the rest of the world basically does first angle projections. I kind of like the third angle projections uh, because it makes a little more sense to me about which views we're showing. But basically what this is going to be, let me show you my example here. If you have a, a 3D object that you're trying to represent on flat paper, it's a difficult thing to do. And a lot of times we'll try and draw like a more three-dimensional, like three-quarter view to try and show all of the object at once. Uh, we call that an isometric drawing sometimes if you draw it at a certain angle. But um, an easier way to draw, although harder to maybe understand, is what's called an orthographic projection. So this object you can see I've drawn really, really straight lines. So there's some triangles and some square and some rectangles, but they're pretty, pretty straight. If you have graph paper, this is even easier. But um, you can see that this object is representing the top and then the front and then the side view, all separated by 90 degree turns. So there's the top of that object, and then I do a 90 degree turn, and that's the front and a 90 degree turn, and that's the side. So by drawing three drawings, I can represent the object with just straight lines if it's a very straight object. It's also not too hard to do curves this way. We're not trying to draw ellipses when we're representing circles because they're elongated or shown out of perspective. We would actually draw circles. Or if we're drawing a cylinder, we draw circles in some views and then uh, rectangles in other views because the cylinder drops straight down. So um, this is a fairly standard way of giving out a blueprint or communicating that, oh, I want this part machined this way to a machinist or how to put things together. So it's an important skill to learn how to, to draw these and how to read them. We always draw the top, front, and side view like this. You can see I've got some construction lines here. So you can see that they line up. Um, I don't always do this 45 degree angle bisector and then reflect down, but this dimension should line up here too. Um, the height of the front is going to line up with the height of the side, so the object doesn't suddenly get bigger just because I twi twist it at 90 degrees. To figure out which views to do, I always tell my students, imagine that there's a sheet of clear material, like a piece of glass between you and the object, and you're just rolling that object on that piece of glass on the underside of it. So it's a 90 degree turn. As I move from the top to the bottom, it goes this way. If I want to go from uh, to the front back up to the top, I'm going to rotate the other way, right? You just roll it on that piece of glass. My students usually have a hard time figuring out this side. It is the right side, but the way you figure out how to get there is you twist like that. Okay. Um, you always want to show the most interesting side. So I, I you know, this object when it exists in space. Uh, it doesn't really have a top, but I wouldn't I wouldn't want to show a, just a flat side. You're going to show the overall outline of the object, as well as any visible edges. And if there's a part that is occluded by the object itself, if it's covered up by the object itself, we draw what are called hidden edges with dashed lines. And we do that, the way I explain that to my students is, if the object was made out of glass or a transparent material, a hidden edge is an edge you could only see if it was made out of glass. So that's why that's a dashed line. For To do this, you're going to want some paper. You want a pencil. Um, you want an, an eraser would be good. I like using a straight edge. You can use anything. I have a little uh, printing block here that we use in laser cutting. Um, you can use uh, my, my favorite kind of straight edge would be a clear plastic ruler that is short. Um, a thing that works really well that most of the time we have with us at school is our ID cards because it's nice and short and you don't run into things like I won't run into my camera or my keyboard or anything like that. So let's do an example together. I have another object. Let me just rotate this object around here so you can get it in your head. This object's not going to have any hidden lines. Um, but let, let me write out for each view. I'm going to write out some notes here. Each view of which there are three. There are three uh, stages that I always kind of think about. One is, what is the outline or the shadow, right? The silhouette. If I hold it up and I get a shadow and I hold it exactly at the light, what sort of outline shadow does it cast? That's the first thing. The second thing are any visible edges. So again, these are the, the 
breaks between the planes. Uh, from a top view, I can't tell that this is sloping down, but I can tell that it starts here and then it changes direction there. So that edge is visible. This edge is going to be visible from the top as well. Okay, this edge would be visible from the top, this edge down in here, except for it lines up with this top edge because it goes straight down. So visible edges is next, and those are drawn with straight lines. And then, or solid lines, excuse me. And then um, for the last part, we do the hidden edges. And these ones are the ones that you would only see if the object was made out of glass. And for these, that's what you use a dashed line for. If you're going to do construction lines and you're using a pencil, use your pressure to make sure that the, the lines that you're using to construct are faint by, by not pressing very hard. And then press hard when you make your, your final lines so that you can easily distinguish. You can also switch to ink for the final lines and ink over them and then erase the whole thing to lighten up these construction lines. But the construction lines help me see that you know when I see this little rectangle up here what does this represent well I can't really tell until I see this view and I'm like oh well it's back behind now so this instead of sticking up I know that it goes down because I can see it goes down how far does it go down it goes down this far and then I have confirmation on the side view okay you can see I had to erase this line and move it up because I wanted it to line up because those things are the same feature so they should be in the same place all right, let's draw this one. I'm going to move on up here, and we're going to do these three things. Outline, visible edges, hidden edges for each of the first of the three views. The top view should always be above the front view. Should always be alongside the side view. Always in that L shape is what I say to my students. And if you do it this way in the United States, you don't have to label those three views because we all know because of convention of a third angle projection, that's top, this front, that side. Let's do this one. Okay, so on this one, we've got a top view of this object would be a rectangle. I'm going to do it without a straight edge here, but I do recommend a straight edge. You want to match the proportions as best you can to what you've got here. That's my outline view. Next, visible edges. I've got one, two visible edges. So I want to write those in about where they are. You'll notice they're not evenly spaced because they're not evenly spaced on the model. Um, you can see my, my, my rectangle could be, use a little bit more rectangularness. Uh, straight edge will help with that, so will graph paper, or even lined paper will help keep you those, those lines parallels. There are no hidden edges. If it was made out of glass, I would see exactly the same thing from the top. So now I'm going to do that rotate. I'm going to pretend like I got my piece of glass here, and I'm going to rotate it down like that. So this right here is going to just drop straight down. This is going to drop straight down. This is going to drop straight down, and this is going to drop straight down. This little section here is because of this downward slope. Plus now I can see how tall my whole overall object is. I see that this is completely horizontal up until I get to this edge. Then I drop straight down and I go over and I go down and I go over. So there's my top and there's my front view. Then I'm going to do a 90 degree turn this way to do, to do my side view. So this height needs to maintain the same. I might have a tendency to shrink it otherwise. I might think that this is too tall. There's my outline view. This little foot is going to stick out there. And then this part that sticks out of the top, that's my sloped top. So there's my top front and side view of that object. It's a very quick draw. This one's probably the most uh, explanatory for this one. But you know, as you get into more complex objects, you might end up with some different some different views being more important. Um, when you have these holes that go through, that's where these dashed lines are going to really come in. But that's all I'm going to do in this video. Um, uh, hopefully you have enough skill here so that you can practice um, on some 3D objects. If you're looking for 3D objects to, to practice on in uh, on the internet, you can just uh, search for isometric solids and then instead of showing you these three views it will show you the three quarter view and you can imagine what the top front and side view would be all right that's it for this video and hope hope that you see some more videos about uh, orthographic and isometric drawing on my channel